welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video we're going to look at uh some of the emerging trends in uh m and e yeah monitoring and evaluation you should know this is a must know uh how m and e is evolving yeah in uh 2023 in the different fields first we're going to look at how m and e is involved is uh evolving uh the trends in m and e in the different approaches one uh, uh M and E is evolving uh, in uh, adaptive M and E. That is, uh, this is an approach that embraces uncertainty, complexity, and feedback loops in design and implementation of the M and E systems. Uh, in this approach, uh, it's uh, it allows for flexibility, learning, and adaptation in responses to the changing con conditions, assumptions, and evidence. So, using the adaptive approach of M and E. Uh, as uh, the world is evolving and uh, project implementation, projects, products are evolving. In the adaptive approach, here you look at uh, if you've done uh, your evaluation or monitoring and there is need to change or adapt to another approach, you are flexible. There is flexibility that you can actually adjust something and uh, for, so that you attain the achieved result. So, for example, you may find that you you uh, maybe you produce a product on market, and uh, you're doing your M and E to see how well the product has been received. Maybe you're producing a juice. Let's say it's called uh, Haniel. Yeah, Haniel, and that's the juice you put produce the product you put out on the market. So, using adaptive adaptive uh, the adaptive uh, approach of M and E, you actually look at uh, how are people responding to this product. Or, or yeah how are people responding to this product are they uh is it uh well being re well received how is the test of this product so you can do that before you actually fully launch the product so yeah so if you find that uh, any challenges that's the flexibility with the adaptive m and e then you can adapt to like what actually people need if you know that maybe in my creating the problem or solution to this i didn't do a, a proper problem tree analysis then I can adapt and change so that I can ad achieve my desired, desired outcome that is maximum profit for the product. Yeah, then we have participatory monitoring and evaluation. You can go and look at uh, my video. I have a video on uh, M&E approaches, approaches where I explain more about uh, uh, the different approaches. But participatory, participatory approach, uh, this is an approach that basically involves uh, active engagement and empowerment of the intended beneficiaries and uh, other stakeholders in the M&E process. So in the participatory monitoring and evaluation, uh, uh, you're, you're aiming to ensure that the M&E you're doing is uh, relevant, inclusive, and responsive to the needs, perspective, and values of the, of the population you're handling or beneficiaries. So here in the participatory M and E, you aim to foster a culture of ownership, accountability, and learning among stakeholders, as well as enhance quality, credibility, and usefulness of the M and E findings and recommendations. So, in this, you actually, from the initial project uh, inception and design, you're involving the key stakeholders in the M and E process, so that they can own this process at at uh, at the end for sustainability of results. So here, let's say you have beneficiaries uh, uh, that are maybe you're running a project. Uh, let me just say wash uh, in schools and your beneficiaries are schools. Then you have to involve them in the this project inception and design of the wash in schools that are the head teachers and teachers. And then uh, you can create that uh, they also can monitor this intervention in case it has been put place. Is it running? Are there any 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 mechanical conditions that we need to be addressed? So that by the end of it all, they own this process and the results and appreciate the results. Then we have uh, the tech enabled M and E approach, also an emerging approach that uh, leverages on uh, technology to improve efficiency effectiveness and accessibility of M&E. Uh, I have a video on uh, digital tools for M&E where uh, technology has enhanced 
data collection analysis and visualization of large amounts of data that is uh, called the big data evolution yeah so you can uh, in uh, tech and about m and e actually use technology to foster efficiency and effectiveness of your m and e process uh, i looked at different tools you can use that cobo cobo as a collection tool also an analysis tool uh, there is excel there are so many online data collection tools epicollect 5 google forms uh google sheet for analysis there are so many uh they, we have gis that can easily locate uh, uh uh have a central place for for locating uh different data in different districts yeah so that's all the tech and about m and e uh which is actually a trend of uh, the new m and e and how people are conducting m and e to foster efficiency and effectiveness of the m and e dashboards uh then uh, in uh, two uh thirdly we have the gender responsive m and e so the gender responsive m and e just is uh, an approach that uh, recognizes and addresses the different needs roles and experiences of women and men as well as other marginalized groups in the m and e process so here you're you're doing a, your m and e while putting at the back of your mind that uh, you have to address the different needs of the the all men and women and other marginalized groups that are representative in the m and e process the aim here is uh, to promote gender equality and social inclusion in the design and implementation of the m and e yeah yeah so here you have to actually use gender sensitive uh uh, indicators, methods, and tools, as well as participation and representation of the diverse stakeholders in your M and E process. Let's say that uh, you're you're conducting uh, a project, and uh, yeah, so for both men and men, how climate change maybe affects them. You're actually being gender inclusive and see how does climate change maybe affect uh, uh, the crippled people. Yeah, so it's uh, a gender inclusive. M and E because they are aiming at equality and social inclusion. Then we have the utilization focused M and E right now, an emerging approach, and one of the trends in uh, we have in M and E, uh, where uh, the utilization approach you focus on the intended user and the use of the M and E findings and uh, recommendations. Yeah, so this is a. Uh, Focus on the user. It is uh, as you hear the utilization focus. MNC focus on the user. In that, as I, I gave a, a, an example of a product, if you're producing a product, you're actually aiming that the product, the product I'm producing, is supposed to solve a solution. It's supposed to actually the solution I have to create is supposed to be user centered to this user. So yeah, so when you're creating your MNC process, it has to be uh yeah. Uh, Keeping the user at the core, at the core of your M and E, uh, keeping the quality and timeliness of the M and E products, as well as the capacity and motivation for users to apply them. As I said, it's focusing more on the user. So uh, the utilization focused M and E requires identification and engagement of the primary intended user. You identify your intended user and engage them in the alignment of your M and E purpose methods and questions and reporting within their needs and preferences uh, with the utilization focus m and e it also involves uh, the use of innovative formats and channels to communicate and disseminate m and e findings such as stories infographic infographics podcasts news so that these are uh, uh findings are appreciated by the user yeah for example for for you maybe uh, i can give an example of the utilization focused m and e you can look at uh, uh our networks either mtn or airtel uh you look at people who use the networks yeah and these are the service provider does the service actually suit the user is it uh quality to the user is it uh, the cost effectiveness of the, the the quality to the user and if you find out the findings actually also share them with the user so that they can appreciate the findings and make recommendations where there is need to be adjustments uh then uh, uh, also we have uh how m and e is emerging in terms of the sustainable development goals where i have to make sure that uh, as uh, most countries now align their goals in regards to the sdgs 
so that uh, there is a collective impact. And uh, in itself, it shows that the process of creating these goals are associated with the SDG indicators. So here, uh, when you're designing your MRN process of doing your project conception or design and designing your indicators, you have to, uh, the world now is making sure that uh, these goals are all aligned to the SDGs, contributing to the SDGs. Where M and E right now is more focusing on, uh, is uh, focusing more on contribution rather than uh, attribution that uh, maybe uh, I constructed this school so this result is attri attributed to me if I'm a donor. Let's say I'm uh, called Owase. Yeah, I'm a donor Owase and uh, if I constructed a tank in this school then this result is attri attributed to me. No, m and &E is moving away from that and uh, looking at results, uh, focusing them on the SDGs uh, where I can say that uh, if I've constructed this tank, I'm contributing to access to safe water, to safe and clean water, and uh, also sanitation. And which goal does it go to align with? Ah, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a maybe uh, reduce poverty or one of the goals or, or quality education in schools. Yeah, so I'm attributing, I'm contributing to that goal. Like uh, in me constructing this tank for this home, the, 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 there is a all the schools there is reduced money they're going to spend on now what buying water and that is saving to them so i'm contributing to what reducing the poverty the overall sdg of reducing poverty in africa yeah so that's uh the new emerging money focusing on mainly the uh the collective impact the overall impact uh then you have uh uh, it can uh, become coming more purely from evaluating impact to uh, evaluating thinking. Here, uh, in uh, evaluating thinking, evaluating thinking takes uh, evaluation purely as of the technical evaluation. Yeah, it seeks to make sense and meaning in the work under review. And more and more organizations are embracing evaluation as an opportunity for learning and programmatic strengthening rather than simply a system of taking account so with uh, evaluating evaluating impact it was more of a system of what of uh, taking account or accountability that these are these were the goals we set out to do we, ach we achieved them and yeah this is the accountability yeah it's rather now evaluative thinking where you're appreciating the process of evaluation you're reflecting on what needs to be done better or what are the best practices we can move forward or upscale or scale up yeah can you create a criminal practice with these best practices that is now the evaluative thinking of m and e rather than focusing on the evaluating the impact you're focusing on the evaluative thinking of the process yeah you're doing critical reflections of the whole process uh doing inquiries using data evidence based evidence based data to make decisions yeah, and uh, becoming more evidence driven that if we found that this has worked, can we upscale it? If we found that this has not worked, can we make changes? That is evaluative thinking. Uh, let's say if uh, maybe I'm going to still give a, 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 an example of a product, if I found out that uh, the product I produce, maybe if it's a cream, and it's not working then i can adjust it i can change it to a better cream i can uh, adjust the solution i can do that i can uh, to make it better that is evaluative thinking maybe if i found that uh, maybe one of the best practices we found in school in under implementing our wash project we found that uh, using the local hand washing uh, pipes has helped both in uh, improving sanitation in schools, but also can reserve water to actually help us water our gardens. And that's a best practice. We can upscale to other countries or other schools. And that is evaluating thinking rather than purely evaluating impact. And then m and &E has also evolved now from uh, open data sharing to responsible data sharing. As I mentioned earlier, uh, with the tech enabled m and &E, you use a lot of big data, which is now 
online and uh, with open data sharing everyone maybe with the uh, questionnaires back then people used to access that but right now you have to make sure that this data actually as a responsibility of this data is actually protected and has access control or levels that uh, you're protecting the data of the people that have been given there is confidentiality of this data there is privacy of this data so not everyone can access this data this data you're protecting the data that you're collecting but also preserving it for the your respond your your respondents so Eman is moving away from uh, open data sharing to responsible data sharing that you only share this data to people who are actually supposed to what to get access to this data uh, then lastly Eman is uh, raising uh, from uh, impact investment to uh, to impact being considered simultaneously through social and uh, financial lenses uh, here um uh, M and E in the uh, as I said earlier, it used to be accountability where you look at only the financial uh, aspect of M and E. Uh, have these resources been utilized well? Uh, is the uh, how is uh, you doing the bank reconciliations or auditing? And uh, that's also part of M and E. Are they all matching and what? Are the funds fully used? Yeah, or is there not any thought? Any thought? It's moving away from that to more to the social impact that yes this money was spent but has there been a social improvement and here we're looking at uh m and e looking uh more of uh the outcomes the social outcomes the quality quality outcomes of uh, a program yeah uh if uh, let's say were well, the lives really improved with this program apart from the money accounting the money to the detail where people's lives improved that is a social aspect yeah have we contributed to reduction in poverty have we contributed to reduction of this 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 is in uh, this area yeah maybe to reduction of aids in uganda yeah so it's moving away from that from the typical accountability of financials to the social impact yeah uh m and a practice uh, is now from a value or money perspective and combining both financial and social modeling yeah so you're combining both financial and social modeling not looking at only value for money but also the social aspect of uh the money of the intervention you're doing yeah and and this has second through yeah so it's no longer just about accountability but also strategic investment uh driving strategies from implementation that if i'm uh, uh if I've invested in this project, it has to be not about accountability only, but is it a strategic investment? Like, is it contributing to the financials, but also the social aspect of this uh, intervention or the community I'm, I'm doing this for? Yeah, so that is it about uh, the emerging trends in M1E and uh, emerging M1E approaches for the emerging trends in M1E. Thank you very much. Uh, like, share, and subscribe to my channel uh, for more content about M1E and PPM. Yeah, thank you very much. So.